Hey, good morning, everybody. It's time for the morning briefing. It is so great to be with you all. Sincerely appreciate all the great support you are giving us out there. So many of you are tuning into our morning updates as well as everything else we do, including our long form podcast. And we are soaring, soaring, soaring up. And I make no mistake about recognizing who's responsible for that, and that is you. So many of you are giving us such great support. I sincerely appreciate it. All right, we have got a lot of changes to talk about. We've got weather changes, size of fish, fish are moving, different tackle techniques. We're going to get into all of that and more. But first of all, yesterday we had that video that Captain Dave Dodge sent in to us. It was really, really clear and there was a fish down there and we asked you to ID it. Several of you got it right. We threw the names in a hat and we drew one and the winner is a gentleman by the name of, are you ready? Victor Clark. Victor Clark is the winner. He properly identified that fish as a spotted Bay Bass $25 gift certificate to Opson Fluorocarbon, www.opsonusa.com. Put in FA at checkout and you'll get a note from owner Greg Brown as well as a free gift. So, hey, Victor, thanks for your support and congratulations. Send me an email when you get a chance. It's walkwithphil at gmail.com walkwithphil at gmail.com if i don't see an email from you i'll find another way to contact you congratulations down at island fishing tackle in beautiful carson california with my friend sam de la torre and i've got to mention a couple of guys number one david maestro who is going to jump on the thunderbird tonight we're going to get a report from him because he'll be our guest Tuesday Night Live, David Maestro is an outstanding angler, a super nice guy, and extremely knowledgeable on everything out on the water. And he'll just be getting back from his trip on the Thunderbird out of Davies Locker in Newport Beach, fishing with the one and only Jeff Marklin. And we'll get a report from him. We'll learn more about what's effective, current, up-to-date stuff. We may even have a surprise visit from a captain that I just talked to. So Tuesday Night Live is gonna be a lot of fun. And Mark, I met Mark yesterday down there at Island Fishing Tackle. And what a gentleman, what a great guy, Mike Mongero. And my, Mark was telling me how much he enjoys the show and how much he loves to watch the morning briefing with his daughter. So I want to give them a shout out this morning and say hello to both. You know, Mark started to rave about something to me or started to talk about something and it gave me an insight into the kind of person he truly is. And what was it? He talked about fishing with his daughter. He talked about a great trip they have this weekend and that tells me just what kind of a guy he is. In fact, I don't know if Mark's daughter, well, she doesn't care. She won't get up in the morning for anything, like most of us, you know? If you got to get up in the morning to go to school or do something like that, sometimes it's a little difficult. But Mark says when he says we're going fishing, his daughter has no trouble at all popping up and getting ready to go. So great meeting all of you great folks yesterday, and I can't thank you enough for all the support. All right, let's get you down to Ensenada where the boys down there are trolling around and doing really, really well. They have been coming up with some excellent catches of bluefin tuna. Most of it's troll fish down there. They love running around with the Mad Max and those Mad Max continue to produce. We broke that a few about a month ago with Sam and man, those are just the hot trolling jigs. And you know, you look back when I was a kid and we were fishing bluefin tuna and they never bit the troll. And last year, you know, we didn't catch all that much fish on the troll. Things are just constantly changing in this game, and you got to stay up to date on everything that's going on. And yesterday, we saw a lot more smaller fish. Smaller, you know, 100 pounders, 80 pounders, little tiny bluefin tuna. And I'm being a little bit facetious because we're so blessed to have been catching these 200, 250 pounders. And I'm not talking like those are a thing of the past. There were fish of that grade caught yesterday but there seemed to be a lot of that 70 to 90 pound fish caught yesterday still a magnificent beautiful grade of bluefin tuna so blessed that we all are to have that fish in our own backyard now there were boats that missed when i say missed i'm talking about less than a fish per rod so we, we're getting used to this limits 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 and 
kind of that's kind of has a bad side to it in that you're disappointed if you don't get a limit of fish. I mean, if you get one of those things or you get a shot at those things, it's really an incredible opportunity. And once again, some boats missing, some boats really slamming them. Uh, we had uh, Fortune on a day and a half trip, 18 guys, 16 bluefin tuna, Tomahawk, 16 guys. That was a day and a half, 27 bluefin tuna, Top Gun 80, a two and a half day trip, 32 bluefin tuna, Grande on a day and a half, 30 guys, 60 bluefin tuna. That is limits. The Pacific Queen had limits. Again, a lot of that 70 to 90 pound fish and a lot of sinker rig fish in the daytime hours. In fact, I would say that's the majority. In fact, Eddie, who was at Sam's also yesterday, really nice guy. In fact, he's got a Spanish language YouTube channel where he's giving out all the tips. It's called Pescando con Edward y sus aventuras. Uh, great guy, and he was saying sinker fish in the daytime was the way to go. And of course, you can jump over and look at this new technique that all the boys are using down there now to fish for bluefin tuna when you're sinker fishing. No more of the rubber band and the helicoptering down and you're all tangled and you're out of the game before you even know you're out of the game. A new method that you got to take a look at. Sam De La Torre, nobody better to explain it from Island Fishing Tackle. We've got that up right now. Eddie talked about it. Sam shows you how to do it. It's a really good tip and you definitely want to be doing that. Now, those boys that are leaving at 6 a.m. in the morning, I am so stoked about those guys. The fact that you can leave at 6 and come up with these nice, beautiful bluefin tuna is still mind-boggling. I refuse to accept that as just the norm. I just for refuse because, you know, some of you younger guys, when you get to be an old man like me, you're going to be telling your grandkids, you know, I remember we could go just outside of Point Loma and we could catch these giant bluefin tuna and the kids are going to go, oh boy, grandpa's back in the tequila again. So it's really special. It's an amazing situation right now and I'm stoked to see it going on. Mission Bell, 16 yellowtail, 7 bluefin tuna yesterday. There are yellows on the kelp. So in addition to the heavy tackle, which you're definitely going to need, you need a two-speed reel, something with 80 to 100 pound on it. I mean, you know, so those big fish kind of got out of the picture. They could be on them right now, on them last night. Definitely want to have heavy, but you want to have some 30, 40 pound fluorocarbon leaders for the yellows that are on the kelps. As you can hear, the Mission Bell had a pop on that. The San Diego 36 guys, 14 bluefin tuna yesterday. So that stuff is still around at night. You know, as I say, things are changing. Normally at night, you get all these big fish, but we've been seeing a lot of smaller fish at night, 40, 50, 60 pound bluefin tuna. Knife jigs, extremely effective. The Daiwa Sakana jigs, also very, very effective. 100 gram, 150 gram, 200 grams, like that, sometimes a little bit bigger. And you're gonna to talk to your crew, you're gonna hear the captain saying what depth they're at. They're gonna be the guys that you're gonna rely on because we are in this state of constant change. So the first thing you're gonna do when you walk on board the boat that you're gonna fish, you're gonna say, what were they biting yesterday? What were they biting last night? Get the current, because it's just changing all the time. And then it's subject to change while you're out there. So you have to be ready to change your tackle fast. You gotta be ready to listen to the crew. You drop down to where the captain says, and you got a very good chance of coming home with some blue fin tuna. And that is really a dream come true for so many anglers. So San Diego, still there, still doing very, very well. That fish is creeping up a little bit, but it's kind of staying put right now. I'm still wondering if there's fish out on Tanner and Cortez. Nobody's really been out there to look around. There's been no need to do it quite yet, but I'm getting the feeling that there could be some really good fish out there in that neck of the woods. Coronado Islands, most guys are driving by it, but there are yellows there, a few yellows popping up here and there, and you know, rockfish, calico bass, that kind of a thing. But as I say, it's just a venue right now that everybody overlooks because they're running for the tuna. All right, let's talk about the coastal region. I've been predicting a very, I'm, I'm really good on my predictions, as you know. Every time I make a prediction, nothing happens. But there's enough barracuda up and down the coast, and there's going to be a lack of wind here for the next several days, maybe the week, that I think a barracuda bite could take off somewhere. We see them down around Ensenada, in San Diego, Dana Point, up in the Santa Monica Bay, around here in Long Beach, San Pedro, up in the Channel Islands. 
it's set up perfectly for it because we've got a lot of anchovy around. We've got better and improving conditions. I still think that the gar could get in the picture. However, really what is going on is mostly sculpin, rockfish, that kind of thing. There's been flashes of calico bass. They're kind of trying to spawn a little bit as the water temps get up. A lot of short fish, but some legal fish also. And once again, fishing calico bass is a lot of fun. You fish lighter line, you'll get more bites than anybody. Light line, choose a good hot bait, and you will be rocking and rolling on that calico bass. That's a good way to get it done. But remember, mostly rockfish. Even up there in the Channel Islands, Cody Rogers, who runs the Island Spirit out of beautiful Ventura Harbor sport fishing, he's had some good signal on the beach there for sand and calico bass, barracuda, a few halibut in there. So things are looking good in terms of potential for the local scene, and we'll be watching that maybe this weekend. We'll get a lot more boats out. Guys will be bouncing around. They might find some bird schools of garb that pop up, and you're going to be throwing the iron on some barracuda. Wouldn't that be pretty cool? Catalina Island, as we start to look at our local islands now, at Cat, improving conditions, slower fishing for the most part. It's a pretty good show on yellows yesterday for some of the guys. Not much on the catching side, but at least we're seeing them. That's a good sign. You got to see them before you catch them. So some of that, some bonita. Um, you know, some guys are getting a little sample on the calico bass at times. Uh, a few more legals, but mostly shorts, uh, rockfish, that kind of thing to help fill in. And once again, uh, cat looks like it could rebound. It's not going to be subject to any horrible weather here this weekend. I think cat should be a venue that could be easily fished so that's looking pretty darn good and our fingers are across san clemente island on the other hand is going to get a little breezy this weekend um, i think it's fishable maybe not it's going to be on the borderline um, but and it's a forecast so you know you could pop out there and say whoa what the heck they were wrong on this one nice weather few yellows over there being taken copious amounts of whitefish rockfish i mean you're going to go home with a sack full of Good eating rockfish in most cases. Decent calico bass fishing at Clemente. But once again, we do have a little weather here this weekend. And man, has that been a pain in the neck. This wind has been just, it just won't, somebody's got to turn the fan off, okay? We've had enough. We've had our springtime wind starting to move into almost the summertime wind, and we are over it. So once again, we'll continue to watch it. Clemente, you got to think, is going to turn on one of these days with the yellows. But for right now, it's picky and scratchy. Now, here we go. Those poor guys in the Channel Islands. God almighty, every time they get a weather window, they start scoring. Mirage yesterday, 15 white sea bass, six barracuda, good rock fishing. The Endeavor the other day with limits of chrome. They had great sea bass fishing. The Aloha Spirit has been doing really well. Yesterday, they had 15 guys, seven white sea bass, 11 halibut, and Cobra, and you know many other boats up in that neck of the woods got a really good sample. And I, I suppose they're going to do that again here this morning. I mean, the weather is decent here this morning, and then it all goes to spit. And it's going to be pretty windy up there. Again, their forecast, I'm praying that those guys can get out because they've been dealing with some really rough weather up there, windy weather. And I'm telling you, that place would blow sky high up there at Ventura Harbor, sport fishing and surrounding area. It would blow sky high if we could get a sustained open window and be able to fish up there. It would really be something good. They fish a lot of dropper loop there. Same thing at Clemente. So heavier line is what you want to fish for the most part. I like fluorocarbon. You know, I like opsin. So fluorocarbon on your dropper loops, on everything you're doing, I think it really bodes well. The more I think about that abrasive resistance that a fluoro gives you, I like it. So dropper loops, uh, you're going to vary what sinker you use depending on wind and current. But most of the time, about a six ounce, eight ounce torpedo sinker should do you just fine up there in that neck of the woods. However, we do have this wind and I am sorry to be the one to report that to you. Hopefully the boys will be able to get out and do their thing, but it's looking dubious up there in that neck of the woods and really good signal all the way through there. Along the beaches here, more and more Corvina. We just finished up a grunion run and now that we come off it, these little devils, and I'm talking about the 
yellowfin croaker, spotfin croaker, halibut, corbina, they're going to get hungry again. They had all that feed on the beach and sometimes they get really full and get lethargic and you throw a lure at them and they don't want to bite it, but hopefully now they'll get back on the chew and there's been some decent fishing and there's been a lot of corvina. In fact, we were fishing here just the other day, myself and a friend, and this nice woman walked up and said, you know, I was just out there and had fish bumping into my legs. Normally when that is happening, that's corvina. You feel those corvina and they'll bump into your legs all the time. Scare the hell out of you sometimes, but uh, you're thinking, oh my God, here goes a ray just waiting for that. And thank God it's a corvina. Those fish along the beach love to bite on the lighter monofilament. And I like fluorocarbon, six pound to eight pound. Works really, really well. However, those two hook rigs that you chuck way out there with a pyramid sinker, like a two ounce, three ounce, uh, two hooks with sand crab, sandworms, uh, mussel, something like that. Those are very effective on spot fin and yellow fin croaker. Uh, bait, big fish bait and tackle right up the street here on the corner of Seal Beach Boulevard and PCH has all your surf fishing needs and so many beaches nearby where you can catch some really great fish. Well, it's going to be a lovely weekend. We're going to hope that that wind doesn't affect everybody. We'll see what happens with that tuna. Will it stay a little bit on that 90 to 100 pound class or are we going to get back into that 250, 300 and maybe somebody catches a 400 pounder this year. We'll watch that very closely and of course we'll keep you going here all weekend long on Friedman Adventures. Again, so great to meet so many of you out there. I want to thank you all for your constant support. Now you've got us pushed toward 9,000 hours of content consumed in the last 28 days. Not there yet, only at 8.5 thousand. And we're pointed now because we just keep going up and we keep going up because of you. Thanks everybody, I sincerely appreciate it. Wishing you a great weekend. Mark, hope you and your daughter have a wonderful fishing trip and I hope each and every one of you do also. Take care my friends, I will see you soon.